Hi there, oh welcome to my views and news. Resumption of ethnic clashes in the Oromia special zone of Amhara region. Around 48 hours ago, clashes erupted there. What happened? Which parties are involved? Secondly, Christian Tredale, a member of parliament of uh, the House of Representatives, appeared at a court. Uh, around 24 hours ago and their food and drinks were served to the MP. What happened? Why did the judge, uh, why did he order that food and drinks be served to question Tadale? Thirdly, meeting in Makale about disarmament. Of Tegarai fighters. We know that in June, more Tegarai fighters will be disarmed. How many? What is being discussed? What are Tegarai's concerns? And uh, is disarmament in line with what Tegarai military commanders are saying? What did Tadasa Varade say in some recent interviews and in a statement a few days ago? Firstly, viewers, Oromo Amhara clashes. I call them Oromo Amhara clashes because there is no better word. So I don't like using uh, such words. The problem is that this is what is happening. These are purely ethnic clashes in Oromia special zone, parts of North Shore zone as well. In North Shore, there is fighting between military and Fanotu, but these clashes in these areas, which I'm talking about, are purely ethnic clashes. Ongoing for years, and we see episodes of these clashes. Uh, clashes are up, then there is lull of a few days, and then clash resume. A few weeks ago, uh, heavy clashes erupted between Amhara. Fano fighters and Romo armed uh, people. Dozens were killed and injured. People were people had to be transported to Oromia, to Afar, for treatment. Back then, the road was closed, main road. Uh, then uh, there was a little lull for a few days. Now, once again, we're seeing resumption of clashes in Oromia special zone. Oromia special zone is part of the Amhara region, but uh, obviously, Oromos are in large number here. That is why it's called Oromia special zone. Oromos living in Oromia special zone uh, are armed. Local farmers are armed. Why are they armed? They say that they're, they're under threat. They're attacked by Marafano fighters. Pano groups accuse these Oromos of being backed by Ola. They say that these uh, Ola uh, members are backing Oromo, uh, 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 Oromos um, of Oromia special zone, and Ola is. Uh, Weaponizing Romia special zone, and they say that uh, these Romos are helping the government military in the fight against the Fan fighters. Again, the, the same parties involved Fano groups on one side, Romo armed farmers on the other side. The clashes happened mainly in Artoma Parsi, Warida, in Romia special zone, in Fako, Goro, Dogudo. These are small villages in. Artomo Farsi, Roma Special Zone. There were heavy clashes between the two sides. Ano fighters entered there, clashes erupted. Uh, several people injured and killed. At least five casualties are being confirmed. Again, both parties accusing each other. Ano fighters say that Roma farmers are trying to enter Amara, Amara special, uh, North Shore Zone of Amara region. They are attacking Amara settlements. Romos say that uh, Fano fighters entered Romia special zone. They want to kill Romos living there. The same statements which we have been seeing for years. Military either silently promotes this conflict or it is not in a position to control the situation. Why would military uh, fuel the conflict? Military fuel the conflict indirectly by being. Uh, a distance. Obviously, Fano fighters become involved against uh, Romo farmers, Romo armed locals. Military will have a respite. It can plan more operations against Fano fighters. A military have a, will have more support from Romo 
locals. But this is a very dangerous uh, incident, not the first. LRT must intervene, otherwise uh, these clashes can always expand. Secondly, viewers, uh, an Amhara politician appeared at a court. Uh, he is MP, member of parliament, member of the House of Representatives. Krishna Kadal is his name. He is from Nama, National Movement of Amharas. Uh, I think he's from Gojam. The man was arrested last year when a state of emergency was imposed. He was accused of uh, working with anti peace forces to almost for the government. The man is very critical of the Ethiopian Bim Abi at a parliament meeting. He demanded resignation of Ethiopian Bim Abi. And after that, we saw that he was arrested. He was accused of supporting Fano fighters. Mr. Dale went on hunger strike in prison. And when he appeared at a court this week, the judge asked him about the hunger strike. He said he was on hunger strike because uh, his rights were not being respected. He was being, uh, he was not being given his due rights while in custody. Judge, the judge asked him, do you need food? He said, yes, I'm hungry. I've been on hunger strike. The judge ordered that meal and drinks be served to Christian Tadale, which was done. And then hearing resumed. So these Amhara prisoners, senior level prisoners like Christian Tadale, Johannes Vujalio, Kasat Tishagar, these people are in a very difficult situation. They are in custody. They say their rights being denied. Though no one supported them, I mean their fellow MPs did not support them. Their immunities have been revoked. No large scale uh, protests in support of them. They are on their own. Uh, from Romeo on his own. Uh, no large scale support for Tadendia from Amhara people, from Romeo people. No protest in support of Tadendia. One problem for opposition politicians in Ethiopia is that uh, if they start opposing the government directly, they will be arrested and no one will speak for them. Maybe that is why politicians like Jawar, Baklegarba, Purira Gudina, Daudipsa, uh, they either stay silent or they remain abroad. Because if they are detained, if they are put in prison, then no one will speak for them. If people want real change in Ethiopia, if people want uh, opposition to flourish in Ethiopia, obviously they'll have to sacrifice as well. Leaders alone cannot do anything. People decide to criticize Jawar a lot. What can he do alone? If he speaks, if he starts a movement against the government, he'll be arrested. Then who will free him? He went in prison for more than a year. You saw that. Yes, I agree. But why did these politicians choose to start politics? Because they want to lead their people. They want to bring about a change. So if they are not in a position to launch a struggle, genuine struggle against the government, then they should not be part of politics. If they want to be part of politics, obviously they have to face the risks. Uh, thirdly, viewers, uh, meeting in Makale about demobilization, disarmament, reintegration of Tigray fighters, DDR, it is called, mentioned in Pretoria D. Tigray so far has uh, disarmed and demobilized around 1,000, I think, uh, TDF members. More than 2,000 are still in Tigray, armed with heavy weapons, small arms. Tigray has surrendered heavy weapons, group weapons. Small arms, they are TDF members armed with small arms. And uh, federal government in its statement has been urging Tigray to work on DDR. 
to disarm demobilize remaining Tigray fighters too. In June, more TDF members will be demobilized. For that, a preliminary meeting is underway in Macau. It kicked off yesterday, attended by FAO observers, federal government, uh, Tigray government, Tigray military. All are there. Talks ongoing. The demobilization commission chief, Tamaskan Tilahun, is also there. Discussions ongoing. Tigray has been linking the demobilization, disarmament its fighters to the deadlock over contested territories and to the presence of uh, non ENDF forces in Tigray. One zone largely retaken by Tigray, that is southern zone. Fate of western zone still unclear. Tigray Retia border still controversial for Tigray Retia says no controversy. It's in control of territories, uh, which is part of Eritrea. Will Tigray disarm all its uh, fighters uh, before a decision, final decision, before it takes over western zone, before it pushes Eritrean military back? That remains to be seen. I don't think so. I think that in June, Tigray will demobilize around 50,000 more. It will take some time to demobilize, disarm entire TDF. Before that, Tigray would like western and southern zones back completely under its control. It would like Eritrea to withdraw to from areas which Eritrea say, says are part of Eritrea. So DDR will take a long time to be completed. Question is how many will be demobilized in June? Discussions ongoing. Let's see what happens. Uh, we heard from Trasavara a few days ago that by the first week, of June, issue of Salamti uh, and Raya will be settled. Then by the first week of July, the issue of uh, Volgatomara Sagade will be solved. Let's see. Uh, about Raya, discussions ongoing. Tigray wants to install its administration there. Former employees of uh, Southern Zone uh, are being told to return. They are returning to Lamata, Quorum, etc. No movement on Salamti so far and on Western Inkwoch.